Okay. So, after that, of course, kumustahin ko naman kayo. How was your day and how was yesterday's exam? So, so far, we have seen that lots of you have already uh, taken it and only a few wasn't able to. Anyway, we'll be giving you a special examination. You just need to wait for any announcement for that special examination. Okay. So, uh, to start with... The whole lecture will be uh, discussing first to you about the course task for this week five. Ang bilis, no? Week five na. Okay, so we'll have Ma'am Sheila Mujimulta to discuss to you about our nurse, uh, nurse course task for the week. Okay, so good, af uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I want to share my screen for our task for this week. We are already in week five. Uh, so we have, again, the five tasks we have to accomplish for week five. That is July 6 to 11. So you have to check also the date. Because sometimes you would ask, Ma'am, saan po isasubmit yung week? Saan week na po tayo? Anong? So you can check the, when you try to, to submit, you can check the dates. So you would know. So for the task one, so you can independently study the modules that we will be having, the three modules. So the course unit titles will be Dependable Nursing Information System. The next one is Information Technology Applications in Clinical Practice. And then the last would be Internet Tools in Nursing Practice. And that would all be discussed today by Mr. Sanyo. And then of course, uh, I hope all of you have registered early so we are having our synchronous session now. Then, for the multiple choice questions, the quizzes, uh, we will be, uh, me, I always give my quizzes after, the day after. So it depends on your professors when, they, when the quizzes are already available. And then, for the discussion boards, you always have to uh, log into your Canvas accounts to be able to uh, answer the discussion boards there. So that would serve as your, uh, no, your attendance. If you are not, you, you won't be able to attend the synchronous Zoom meetings or you are dropped from the meeting. Okay. Then for the task five, which is the last task, you have to only answer two or submit this course task, these two course tasks you have. First is list down five nursing organizations in the Philippines, their websites, and provide a brief description. So it's just a brief description of each. The next one is the uh, visit sigmanursing.org and answer the following question. So that, those are only the three questions that you have to answer. I, I think it's two. Two questions only. Number one is who is Virginia K. Saba? What is her role in nursing informatics globally? Number two, what is the extent of our Lady of Fatima University's participation to this prestigious organization? The answer, you would see it when you visit sigmanursing.org. So at least you would know where to get some of your references also. That is a very good website. So I, I hope you already know how to submit those, those course tasks. You, we have our bit.ly our page so this is an external site so you just have to submit it there so uh you won't be you won't be you can you can beat the deadline <laughs> which will be on saturday okay so that's it so if you have questions just type it on the chat box if you want so thank you um campbell for the first lecture that we'll be having today, it would be Sir Romeo Sanyo's lecture or day for today. Okay, Sir Sanyo, could you give us an introduction of what you're going to present to us today? Okay, uh, thank you, Ma'am. Thank, thank you, Ma'am Campbell. Thank you, Ma'am Sheila. Of course, to Sir Joseph and to Dr. MJ. And uh, today, I would like first to congratulate the top 20 examinees who got the uh, highest score. And of course, shout out to all the uh, students who passed the examination. 
So just be inspired in uh, learning and studying while, while um, staying at home. So for today, my first topic will be on uh, dependability of uh, the health, uh, the nursing information system. I know just a brief background of this uh, topic. It's just um, we will, um, this topic will bring us to the concept of uh, dependability that is something to be trusted, to be reliable, to be, brief, to, to be precise. Uh, so that um, uh, so that uh, we can be assured of its accuracy and uh, and dependability, and of course uh, the information system has its uh, weaknesses and uh, limitations, and uh, there is a uh, up, uh, con continuous upgrading of clinical information system uh, to find out some glitches or some uh, software glitches of the software. Uh, so uh, you're ready now, guys, to uh, to listen for the first topic. Ano lang to, it's just like yung uh, yung dependability. It's just like um, similar to a circle of friends. In your uh, in in the environment of your friends, tiyak meron kayong parang something na uh, bukod tanging na isa na we're in something to be relied on, something to be trusted on. So parang ganito ang topic natin, the clinical information system is, is something dependable ito na, na dapat nating uh, paniwalaan. So uh, uh, we're now ready for the video, uh, video uh, presentation. So please watch and learn. Good day, future nurse informaticist. This is Mr. Romeo Sanyo, NI professor, and today I am going to present the subject matter, practice application of nursing informatics. Are you ready to listen now, guys? So let's get started with the topic objectives. At the end of the presentation, I am expecting the learners to one, identify the need for dependable systems in healthcare. Two, enumerate guidelines for dependable systems. Three, review of clinical information system. And the last one, understand the process of designs, implementing and upgrading clinical information system. Now let's have an overview of dependable system and healthcare quality and safety. The healthcare industry is undergoing a dramatic transformation from today's inefficient, costly, manual intensive, crisis driven model of care delivery to a more efficient, consumer centered, science based model that proactively focuses on health management. Well, let's now define the pandemic. Do you have an idea about it? It is a measure of the extent to them justifiably be relied on to deliver the services expected from it. Did you get it? Okay. Dependability has six important attributes. Attributes are as follows. One, system reliability. This system consistently behaves the same way. Two, service availability. Required services are present and usable when they are needed. Three, confidentiality. Sensitive information is disclosed only to those who authorize to see it. Four, data integrity. Data are not corrupted or destroyed. Responsiveness. The system responds to user input within an expected and an acceptable time period. And the last one, safety. The system does not cause harm. Proceed to the five fundamental guidelines that can help increase the dependability of healthcare system. These guidelines for dependable system can ensure protect data from corruption, destruction, and unauthorized distribution. Here 
Here are now the guidelines of dependable system and its brief description. Number one, architect for dependability. An enterprise system architecture should be developed from the bottom up so that no critical component is dependent on a component less trustworthy than itself. Next, anticipate failures. Features that are transparent to software applications should be implemented to detect faults, to fail over to redundant components when faults are detected, and to recover from failures before they become catastrophic. Three, anticipate success. This system planning process should anticipate business success and the consequential need for larger networks, more systems, new applications, and additional integration. Four, hire meticulous managers. Good system administrators should meticulously monitor and manage system and network performance. And the last guideline, don't be adventurous. An organization must use only proven methods, tools, technologies, and products that have been in production under conditions at a scale similar to the intended environment. Let me give you an overview on CIS or otherwise known as clinical information system. Patient care has become increasingly complex with widespread use of advanced technologies in routine care. The healthcare providers must keep track of a staggering amount of information and their failure to do so can have a detrimental effect on patient care. Clinical Information System or CIS is a solution to this dilemma. Now let me give you the process of CIS. It has a different stages or phases. Let me proceed to the first phase, the planning phase. Under this phase, they include definition of the problem, feasibility study, documentation or project scope agreement, allocation of resource. The next phase, System analysis phase includes data collection, data analysis, data review, benefits identification, and system proposal development. The third phase is system design phase. This phase comprises of functional specification, technical specification, and implementation planning. The fourth phase is development phase, followed with testing phase, then training phase, implementation phase, and the last one is evaluation phase. Okay? So that would be all for this particular topic and hope you were able to capture the presentation. For your clarification and questions, it will be addressed on chat discussion box. Thank you for listening. All right, class, so we're done with the first topic. And just to give you a, um, a brief summary of uh, of the, of the first uh, topic, meaning uh, dependability has compom composed of six important attributes and likewise um, uh, guided or directed with five uh, guidelines with a continuous of clinical information composing of, a stage of uh, eight phases or stages so that uh, the rel reliability and the accuracy of the information uh, system uh, okay, be ensured.
All right? So um, we now proceed to the next topic, which is uh, administrative application. So uh, to give you an overview of this topic, it's just like a, a life of a nurse handling with, uh, with technology, handling with devices, machine in the clinical setting, particular in, particularly in the clinical uh, intensive area, and as well in the community area or in the, in the public health, the uh, healthcare system. So um, we now proceed to the, to the next, uh, next video. So continue with my presentation. I will now proceed to this interesting topic. Technologies in healthcare. I know it sounds familiar, right? So are you ready now to listen, guys? Okay. We're starting with the objectives. At the end of the presentation, I am expecting the learners will one define critical care nursing. Two, identify technologies in critical care setting. Three understand the components of physiologic monitoring systems or identify technologies in public health nursing. Number five, provide background on technology ambulatory care nursing. The demand of technologies in healthcare is drastically increasing even in the specialized area or in the critical care setting. So what is CCIS? It is known as Clinical Care Information System, designed to collect, store, organize, retrieve, and manipulate all data related to care of the critically ill client. Now, there are seven components of CCIS. They are one, patient management, two, vital signs monitoring, three, diagnostic testing results, four, clinical documentation, five, clinical decision support, six, medical management, seven, healthcare provider order entry. Information technology in the clinical care setting has several major capabilities. What are they? It processes, stores, and integrates physiologic and diagnostic information from various sources. It alarms or alerts. It accepts and stores patient care documentation in a lifetime clinical repository. Able to calculate and display trend data in graphical presentation. It provides clinical decision support through alerts, alarms, and protocols. Comparatively, it evaluates patient for outcomes analysis. It presents clinical data based on concept-oriented view, and it also presents clinical data based on concept-oriented view. So its capabilities are powerful, right? Let's continue to know IT applications in the critical care setting or popularly known to us, the ICU. So they are divided into two major categories. One, patient monitoring equipment, with their devices, and the other one is life support and emergency resuscitative with their equipment and monitors.
now these are the digital devices under the category of patient monitoring equipment acute care physiologic monitoring system it measures and display various patient parameters or basically it is also called as cardiac monitoring device now when you go to the virtual lab and clinical area you will have the opportunity to set the machine and interpret data together with the clinical condition of your client so that's the acute care physiologic monitoring system or cardiac monitoring device the other one is pulse oximeter it measures the arterial hemoglobin oxygen saturation i know some of you have this already and know how to interpret the figures that registers on the screen right guys intracranial pressure monitor this is usually for cases of severe traumatic brain injury patients intracranial pressure monitor are connected to sensors inserted into the brain through a cannula or borehole and these devices warn of elevated pressure and record or display pressure trends and the last one is apnea monitor this is for detection of breathing cessation episodes apnea monitor as you can see on this screen it uses electrodes or sensors placed on the patient to detect cessation of breathing display respiration parameters and trigger an alarm if a certain amount of time passes without a patient's breath being detected for the digital devices under the category of life support and emergency resuscitated ventilators this machine is now in demand in the ICU due to severe COVID cases. This machine, the ventilator, supports flow of patient respiration. It also consists of a flexible breathing circuit, gas supply, heating humidification mechanism, monitors, and alarms. They are microprocessor controlled and programmable and regulate the volume pressure and flow of patient respiration infusion pump regulates intravenous drip via program setting this is one of the common devices that is being used by the bedside care nurses infusion pump employ automatic programmable pumping mechanisms to supply the patient with fluids intravenously or epidurally through a catheter. The pump is being hung on the intravenous pole, which is located next to the patient's bed. Cross carts or emergency cart or e cart. It holds in an organized arrangement of life support and emergency machine, resuscitative drugs, supplies, and articles. One example is defibrillator. Press cards, also called resuscitation cards or code cards, are strategically located in the ICU for immediate availability when patient experiences cardiorespiratory failure. The cart holds a defibrillator, which is used to apply an electric shock to a patient in ventricular fibrillation. Mm -hmm. 
intra-aortic balloon pump. It aids to pump the heart efficiently. The intra-aortic balloon pump used a balloon placed in the patient's aorta to help the heart pump. The balloon is on the end of the catheter that is connected to the pump's console, which displays heart rate, pressure, and ECG readings. The patient's ECG is used to time the inflation and deflation of the balloon. The basic components of physiologic monitoring system are the following. Sensors, signal conditions, file to rank and order information, computer processor, and evaluation. This time, let's learn information technology systems that were created by IT developers designed for the public health or community health nursing settings. So this is now outside the hospital facility. Relational database that facilitate the retrieval of data for multiple purposes without rekeying. Manipulation of data to create information and knowledge. Point of care devices, computerized patient records, and electronic health records. Clinical repositories as a strategic resource for quality and practice. Electronic interfacing systems to facilitate the sharing of data. Technologies in the Community Health Network System is an innovative ambulatory care system especially, especially developed to provide services by the computer. Download the patient record from hospital to the home database, enter a set of questions about symptoms using expert system logic until the pathways are concluded. Track self-care and, depending on the responses to questions, call or make an appointment with a clinician. Provide additional information on the condition if self-care is chosen to assist the client to resolve the problem. Technologies in healthcare at home is also upgraded with home high-tech monitoring system like, for example, CareWatch, home telemonitoring program for patients with CHF. Do you know what is CHF? It is congestive heart failure. It means enlargement of the heart. Remote defibrillator is a useful device and it allows hospitals to diagnose and resuscitate a homebound patient who has suffered a cardiac arrest. Sophisticated telemetry devices. The examples are digitized X-rays and ECG, electronic stethoscopes and interactive video equip equipment that uses telecommunication technology. Telemetry nowadays is also a special clinical area in a healthcare facility. Alert system. This communication device allows the homebound to signal for help in case of emergency. In the US, you will dial 911 if there is an emergency situation. But here in the Philippines, during emergencies and life-threatening situation, you will dial 117 because it is the national and official emergency hotline number. Two-way communication devices is another sophisticated devices used for communication. Ambulatory care. Ambulatory care nursing is a unique realm of nursing practice and it is characterized by rapid focus assessments of patients, long-term nurse patient family relationships, and teaching and translating prescriptions for care into doable activities 
for patients under caregivers. It is also a specialty practice area that is characterized by nurses responding rapidly to high volumes of patients in a short span of time while dealing with issues that are not always predictable. Ambulatory care with Executive Order 13335 is a law that ensures American people to have electronic health records within 10 years. Moreover, the EO13335 refers for the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services to promote adoption of EHR in ambulatory primary care setting. All right, that's all for this topic, guys. I hope you were able to catch all the major contents of the topic. Thank you for listening. Okay, just to give you a brief perspective of the topic technologies in healthcare. So it means for you guys, two years from now, you will become nurse practitioners. And being a nurse practice practitioners in the area, you will be assigned either in the uh, clinical care uh, setting or in the public health setting. So with that, you will be empowered to operate. You will, you will be empowered to, um, uh, to handle um, uh, electronic devices and uh, machine or machinery for the purpose of rendering appropriate nursing care management. Kaya abangan yun, abangan yun yan, uh, lalo na for the incoming semester, for your medical surgical nursing, you will encounter a lot of, uh, of, um, of uh, illnesses or cases. Okay, together with the, uh, together with all those uh, high-tech devices that you will be um, encountering. Okay, I'll just give you a brief uh, overview of the last uh, video topic, which is uh, the consumer use of uh, informatics. Actually, uh, it's all about nurses as end user of the technology and the internet. So when we say internet, it's all about websites or web pages that the nurses and as well the, the clients or stakeholders must know these uh, essential websites for them, for us, to enrich awareness of issues on health and concerns. So uh, let's now uh, roll the video, please, Sir Joseph. Hello to our future nurse informaticist. This is Mr. Romeo Sanyo, and we are going to know wider on course unit, the consumer use of informatics. Inside this topic, we will be dealing more with the nurses and internet. More often than not, I know you have a huge background ideas on these terminologies. Am I right, guys? So let's get started with the topic objectives. Number one, understand the relationship between nursing and internet. Two, explore internet resources, websites or web pages, and links available for nurses. Three, which is critical on your end. Listen attentively during the PowerPoint presentation. So just sit back, relax, and set focus to gain essential knowledge. In the present generation, the digital age, contemporary nursing practice has changed tremendously over the last decade. Professional competencies for new nurses now include, so it's here, informatics, case management, healthcare policy, cultural sensitivity, and disaster preparedness. Nowadays, the ability to use of the internet is now an essential skill for both nursing students and nurses. So let me proceed to the resources for medical professionals and researchers. In the U.S. Government of Medical and Health Information Resources, they provided the important sources of online information for medical professionals as well as health consumers. And here now the essential websites. 
NLM Gateway. This site is a handy entry point for searching the many valuable resources at the National Library of Medicine. It provides a global search function for PubMed, PubMed Central, and Medline Plus. You may now check their website available on the screen. The next website for healthcare professionals is Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, or EHRQ. This federal agency both conducts and sponsors research on, health, on healthcare quality, safety, and cost effectiveness. Its consumers and patients links provide information on specific conditions, health insurance plans, prescriptions, health, and wellness. It also provides information for practitioners on such areas as disaster preparedness, quality and patient safety, data sets, and research findings. Their website is available now on your screen. The National Institute of Nursing Research is one of the National Institutes of Health. This organization's mission is to support research in nursing in clinical and community settings through grants and other funding programs. It provides information on its own funding initiatives, including diversity programs and resources, links to nursing organizations for various specialties and publications from national conferences and meetings. Please take note, their website is now shown on your monitor. Polvermed Central. This is a free digital archive of life sciences journal literature. The site offers access to the full text of more than 160 high quality open access life sciences journals from various publishers. Here is now their website. Again, take note of it. The popular international health agency, which is Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC. As nursing student, you must be familiar on this important site. www.cdc.gov The CDC's important mission is to monitor the public health, put forth prevention initiatives, investigate health problems, and promote healthy behaviors. This website provides information on specific health and safety topics, a public health image library, and state and national data sets on health and disease. Health Finder. This consumer health information site is maintained by the National Health Information Center of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, a hand-selected directory of the health-related websites of more than 1,500 organizations, government, nonprofit, and educational. Kindly check again on their website address as shown on this screen. Midline Plus is a consumer health resource that brings together information from various government agencies, including the National Library of Medicine, the National Institutes for Health, and others. It provides simple but accurate health-related information for the general public. Please take note again the website which is shown on your screen. National Institutes of Health, Health Information, is another directory of consumer health information. This site has a simple design and is organized by conditions, body systems, type of patient, etc. It provides links to Midland Plus and to specific institutes within NIS. Website is provided on this screen.
This slide will lead us to know the helpful sites that are non-government portals. Biomed Central publishes more than 140 open access journals covering all areas of biology and medicine. Included are journals on nutrition, public and international health, and BMC nursing. Their website is listed on the screen. Health Web or Health Web Navigator. This web organized collection of evaluated, non commercial resources and a collaborative project of health sciences libraries at more than 20 leading academic medical centers in the Midwest. Easy to use and offers basic and guided searching or browsing by categories from AIDS and HIV to women's health. Their website is provided again on this screen. Mayo Clinic, Tools for Healthier Lives, with their accessible website, www.mayoclinic.com. The users can choose diseases and conditions, drugs and supplements, treatment decisions, healthy living, ask a specialist, and health tools. The medical information is high quality and comprehensive, but the tools section sets this resource apart. Online calculators, including BMI, calorie, heart disease risk, self-assessments, including depression, prostate, stress, obesity, and symptom checker and quizzes. OGIN, or the Online Journal of Issues in Nursing. This is a free peer-reviewed international journal addressing topics affecting nursing practice, research, education, and the wider healthcare sector. They present timely information required by nurses and other healthcare professionals to provide current and informed patient care to be socially responsive healthcare professionals and to meet professional development needs. Access their website at www.nursingworld.org slash OGIN slash PLOS or Public Library of Science. Its website is www.plos.org.slash. PLOS is an initiative by scientists and doctors to publish quality, peer reviewed literature and make it freely available to the public and other researchers. Publishes journals in biology, medicine, clinical trials, and genetics. PLOS Medicine publishes articles on public health and international health issues, as well as clinical research. The last but not the least non-government portal is WHO, also known as World Health Organization, one of the most popular and is on top of the COVID-19 pandemic. The WHO is an excellent source of global health information including statistics and country-by-country -country health overview. Nowadays, I know they are watching and working on the COVID-19 updates. Get to know their website at www.who.int. We now move to nursing specialties and diseases specific sites and organization. First on the list is Alzheimer's Association. This association provides information and support to family members, caregivers, and health professionals on Alzheimer's disease. Updated daily and includes news, resources, and information. Check this out their website available on your screen. HIV Insight, Gateway to AIDS Knowledge. San Francisco School of Medicine gives comprehensive, up-to-date information on HIV, AIDS treatment, prevention, and policy at this site. 
this site is divided into five sections, Analysis Base, University of California, San Francisco, and San Francisco General Hospital's complete online textbook, medical treatment, information, commentary, and resources, prevention, policy analysis, and countries and regions. Oncolink, the University of Pennsylvania cancer specialist, launched this site in 1994 to help cancer patients, families, healthcare professionals, and the general public get accurate cancer-related information at no charge. Come to visit their website at www.oncolink.com. Our last list of nursing specialties and diseases sites is Public Health Nursing Section of the American Public Health Association, or APHA. It provides current health-related news, links to information about public health advocacy, articles of concern to public health nurses, general links on health and nursing, links to images, ask and expert sites, and a discussion forum and for public health nursing. You also visit their website as shown on this slide. The next slides are the links and venues of nursing associations, forums, and discussions. American Nurses Association, or ANA, represents American registered nurses. It provides information on current issues in nursing and a sophisticated career center with a searchable jobs database, a space for posting resumes, and advice for job seekers. You may visit their website at www.ana.org. International Council for Nurses, or ICN, is a federation of national nurses associations representing nurses in more than 128 countries that focuses in, on quality in nursing internationally and global health policy. Their website is available on your screen. National Council of State Boards of Nursing, or NCSVN, is a non-profit membership organization that is comprised of state boards of nursing from the United States and its territories. It is also the body that develops and administers the National Council Licensure Examination. Their website is available now on your screen. National League for Nursing or NLN is a membership organization whose mission is to advance excellence in nursing education and prepare the workforce to meet the needs of a diverse population in an ever-changing healthcare environment. It provides continuing education for its members, information on careers in nursing, and an e-career center on search listings. You may visit their website as shown on the slide if you want to know more. National Coalition of Ethnic and Minority Nurse Association, or NCEMNA. It offers information and links to American Nurses Associations representing major U.S. ethnic groups, including Asian American Pacific Islander, Alaska Native American, Hispanic, Black, and Philippine, or PNA. Their website is now shown on your screen. National Federation of Licensed Practical Nurse, or NFLPN. This organization for LPNs, vocational nurses, and nursing students fosters competence through continuing education and professionalism. You may access their website that is now shown on the screen.
I will end the topic with this slide. Our very own website, the Philippine Nurses Association or PNA, wherein almost all active RN are members of this association. The webpage contains nurses directory and information regarding nursing industry, including nurse companies, nursing review centers, nursing schools, caregivers, and nursing articles. Other benefits like rights and protection of PNA members are found on the website. You can check and access their webpage www.pna-ph.org. All right, I'm done with the topic, consumer use of informatics, and I hope you appreciate the importance of the various web pages for healthcare professionals. Thank you for listening. All right. Hello, all right. So uh, we're done, as, as I have said. We're done with the three topics. And just to give you a brief uh, summary of the nurses and the internet, it means nurses and especially nursing students must be vigilant in monitoring the uncontrolled chains of the healthcare environment. Especially nowadays, there is pandemic of uh, COVID-19 virus. So uh, we have to be, uh, be, uh, be informed through the websites for us to, uh, to know the proper information and to prevent fake news or leading to misinformation. So uh, just uh, get in touch with those applicable websites or web pages for the healthcare. That's it, ma'am, for, for today's topic. So back to you, po, ma'am Mel. Ma'am Mela. Thank you, Sir Sanyo. Um, since Sir Sanyo has already given you lots of websites that you could visit uh, with regards to your researches whenever you're going to make your case studies, uh, these are good and quality uh, websites that you could visit so that whenever you do your case study, madalinas din yun to get uh, the pathophysiology and any other information related to all your case studies. So, but of course, sige nga, let me give you a, a short review of, of how we could make sure that the quality, that we'll be having a quality information from each of the websites. So what are the different criteria that you need to look for if, a certain information actually has a has a uh, quality na tinatawag natin. Okay, so anybody, you can unmute your mics. Uh, maybe we could ask for a section from section one. Anyone who could give us uh, one criteria that you need to check if the website is really is uh, contains uh, quality health information. Section one, hello. Hi there, section one. Should I call? <laughs> section, okay, section three. Para ano mabilis tayo. Section three, hello. Okay, we only had that last week. Okay, so I actually gave you a lecture regarding the different criteria that you need to check if a certain website that you visit has a quality health information. Okay, obviously, hindi yata nakinig last week. Okay, section 5. Dali, dali, tayo natin ang ating ano. Do we still have all the students here? Baka naman, kaya wala nang ano. <laughs> Are you still there? Section 5, Section 7? Tawagin natin na muli natin mag yung kanila mga hands gestures. Okay, can you... Sige, let me... Kung ayaw nyo ipakita yung faces nyo, you could at least make, give us a thumb sign if you're still there. Pwede rin, pwede rin ma'am. Hmm. Si Nicole, nakita ko na. Si Ganta. Si Michael Gabriel. O yes, Darryl, si Darryl Rose. Si Okay. Oh, yeah. Huh? I said, okay. nyo. So I would like to see hands up. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, now, sige, let's go back to the question. So, with all of the websites that Sir Sanyo has given you, syempre, we need to know if they're really credible. So, what are the, um, the different criterias na dapat ay makita natin so that we could check if they really are credible? Okay, oh. Mm, section 1. Anyone? Have, section 1. one. Okay, Hi, Carmina. No, pa. Congrats, ha. Okay. Ay, thank you. Just keep it up. Sige, go. Um, yung criteria po na pwede natin kami to evaluate an internet site is the credibility, content, disclosure, links, design, interactivity, caveats, caveats. Okay, so bilis magtingin ng notes si Carmina, <laughs> di ba? Well documented okay. yung kanyang mga ano ah, yung kanyang mga notes. Yes. So somebody from um I think si Miss Almera Penedilla was asking which authority is maintaining the website. Of course, everybody has ano, uh, the, the authority itself is with the, within the website, within the owner of the website. So, sila yung may authority to change, sila yung may authority to do that. But of course, we need to make sure that may mga disclosures kasi yan. They need to, we need to properly identify kung para saan talaga yung site nila, yung website nila. If it's for information, then um, dapat ipinakikita nila yon to make it more, uh, matawag natin na quality yung information na pinoprovide po ng a certain website. Okay, that is a question from Section 3. Thank you, Ms. Almera. Okay, anybody, any, okay, any question regarding the lecture today? Wala. Si Ms. Robles umiiling. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It means uh, everybody understood. Is that uh, is that right? Okay. If ever you have other questions, you could actually message your your oh, advisors, na lang. So para mas madali. Or someone was. Okay, Ma'am Muji, baka you have some final words for your for the students. Okay, so congratulations for the midterm top results. Okay. And I hope you would do good again for the, even for the quizzes, yung mga quizzes nyo. Diba? That is a form of self-assessment. Pero you try to assess yourselves there. Mag-answer pa rin kayo. Baka naman kasi porket sinabi namin na it's not really graded or ano, hindi, hindi nyo na masyado pinapansin. Pero it's a form of self-assessment. Malay nyo, dyan galing yung susunod na exam. Diba? So you have you still have to answer that one. Okay, so don't forget your task for this week. So for, my, for section three, so baka magtanong ulit. <laughs> so I would schedule I will be giving the schedules for the quizzes. So I usually start the day after today. Okay, so so if you have questions, yon nagme-message naman kayo. Kaya lang yun nga Huwag naman masyadong ano, late at madaling araw. <laughs> Pero actually, gising pa nga kami. <laughs> okay, so thank you for uh, attending this Zoom meeting. And yes, Sir Romy? Alright, ma thank you, Ma'am ma 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 Sheila. So as usual, your quiz schedule follows right after, right uh, after this session, just an hour after the, the session. So uh, see you next week for the last, the last, the sixth week session. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> malapit naman, di ba po? Ano? Yes. Oh, malapit okay. na. Um, uh, let me just remind you, for those who haven't taken the midterm exam, an announcement will be made for the special exam, kung kailan yon, and about the link uh, for that exam. Uh, particular examination. So again, if you have any other questions, uh, we would be very willing or I mean, all questions would be accepted by your advisors and I, uh, we will try our best to answer all of them. Wag lang masyadong personal. No, just kidding. Uh, one more thing. 
uh, with the quizzes, uh, lahat po yan, self-assessment yan. So that you would be able to evaluate yourselves if you are really learning something from us. Um, ano pa? Okay, so everything has been said. I wish you all good day and bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you again.